Today we're going to be talking about the Archer Guide and how to build the best set for you. But before we start, I just want to mention that I have a Discord server, so if you have any further questions about dungeons, there's a dedicated channel for it. Also, if you do enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button, and if you want to see more Skyblock videos, hit that subscribe button. I am doing a face reveal if we hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Alright, let's not waste any time and start with the armor. For the armor, I will be mentioning multiple different armor setups depending on what point of the game you're in. The first armor is strong dragon armor or superior dragon armor, undungeonized. Since you're just getting into dungeons, you will not be able to just use any dungeon set because it will require a certain catacomb level. Therefore, you can use this to get started. Or of course, any other non-dungeon armor as long as you can reach catacomb 2. And speaking of catacomb 2, the second armor set is 3-4 Fierce Rotten Armor with Titanic Heavy Chestplate, which has a Catacomb 2 requirement. This armor has an okay amount of damage and effective HP if you are just getting started. The third armor set is Skeleton Master Armor, which has a Catacomb 12 requirement. What makes this armor helpful for archers is the full set bonus where it increases your arrow damage by 25%, which does not include the additional 5% from each piece. The issue you might face with this armor though is surviving as it does not give a lot of effective HP. In that case, there's also the full soldier armor which has a catacomb 9 requirement. This one does not do that much damage but it does have better effective HP and could be helpful if you do not meet the skeleton master requirement. The fourth armor set is zombie knight armor which has a catacomb 14 requirement. This armor also gives good amount of strength and has a decent amount of effective HP for surviving early to mid game floors. Comparing this to the Skeleton Master, it gives more effective HP but you do lose on that arrow damage that Skeleton Master provides. The fifth armor set is 3-4 Shadow Assassin armor with either Zombie Knight Chestplate, Skeleton Master Chestplate, Tier 9 Perfect Chestplate, Werewolf Chestplate or Zombie Soldier Chestplate. For the chestplate, it comes down to preference in terms of damage, price, and effective HP. The zombie soldier, perfect chestplate, and werewolf chestplate are the tanky ones, while the zombie knight and skeleton master are for damage. Skeleton master here is less effective because there is no full set bonus, but it is a lot cheaper right now compared to the zombie knight, so a good alternative. The sixth armor set is, well obviously, full shadow assassin armor. The Shadow Assassin requires for a 5 completion and gives decently high damage and effective HP. Although the reason why I did not suggest Shadow Assassin Chestplate in the previous set because, for some, the Shadow Assassin Chestplate can be expensive to buy. Anyways, something I want to mention though is that the Golden or the Diamond Head is also an option. But the Shadow Assassin Helmet is better only for this set because the full set bonus is extremely good paired with the Baby Yeti until you reach Catacomb 28. And that is because the bonus does not scale with your catacomb level, unlike the heads. Just keep in mind that you will require to own the head for that specific floor, or it will be useless. Therefore, it can get expensive if you do a lot of floors, just something to remember. The seventh armor set is Superior Armor, Dungeonized. This armor is worse than the Shadow Assassin in terms of damage, but good amount of effective HP. It's not really recommended nowadays, but I did want to just mention it just in case you want to consider it. Just keep in mind that this armor no longer has a catacomb requirement. The 8th armor set is Diamond Head with Necron Armor, which requires for 7 completion. The Necron Armor is part of the Wither family that focuses on damage. This armor is pretty much the best armor in terms of damage that you can get in dungeons. Really good and used by most endgame players. The final armor set is Diamond Head with Frozen Blaze Armor. You might be wondering, if I mention the best armor, why is this here? Well, the famous debate of Necron vs Frozen Blaze is back. There are a lot of pros and cons of using both sets and will take a whole video to just compare them. But overall, Frozen Blaze gives more effective HP and almost the same damage as Necron. But against mobs like Withers, Necron's effective HP is better because of the damage reduction from Withers each piece it gives. The reason why people are currently using it more is because of the bug that allows you to pet stack and gain a lot more damage. I won't be mentioning that because it is against the rules but it will get patched soon so don't bother going for that for that reason. My opinion is that the frozen blaze armor should only be considered if you are really high catacomb and master starts it fully. But you will get pet locked because blaze pet is what makes it good. And that's it for the armor setup. Just remember that you're not required to use exactly what I'm showing you. You can experience and see what fits you best. Although I do want to mention a bonus armor piece to consider which is the maxa boots. 
These boots are also from the Wither family that focuses mainly on speed and requires for 7 completion. In terms of damage, the Necron boots will be better, but since speed is somewhat annoying for clearing, many players use Maxa boots for its speed. I would personally say it only uses at a higher stage in the game. Anyways, what reforges and ultimate enchants should you use? Well, for armor reforges, you put ancient and if you cannot afford that, you can use fierce. For ultimate enchant, you have two options, legion and last stand. Legion increases your stats and last stand increases your defense by a percentage when you are below 40% health. Clearly, the legion is better for berserkers but for those who are having surviving issues, last stand works too. Plus with the recent last stand fix, it actually works. If legion 5 is too expensive, legion 3 works fine. Okay, so let's move to pet now. Finding the best pet for you can be difficult, but hopefully I'll help you decide. The first pet is Skeleton. The pet gives you crit damage and crit chance as base stats, and increases your arrow damage by 20%, which is tripled while in dungeons. You also gain a combo stack for every bow hit, giving you 3 strength and maxes at 20 stacks. All while your pet's shooting arrows to mobs next to you with a 15 second cooldown. Overall, this pet is very good, especially for killing mini bosses. The second pet is Wither Skeleton. This pet gives strength, crit damage, crit chance, intelligence, and defense as base stats, and has the ability to take less damage from skeletons and do more damage to Wither mobs. Especially for the floor 7 boss room, this pet would be very helpful and gives you that additional damage reduction. Although in some instances, the damage reduction from skeletons isn't enough, so you would need an effective HP pet. Compared to the skeleton pet, Skeleton Pet is theoretically better for single hit damage, but Wither Skeleton has better stats, especially that damage reduction from skeletons. The third pet is Griffin. This pet is often used for the regen it gives, but also gives you a decent amount of damage. Plus, you would not need the legendary one since the uncommon or rare has the regen ability. The fourth and fifth pet is Baby Yeti and Blue Whale. Baby Yeti gives you strength and intelligence as base stats, and has the ability to give you defense depending on your strength while Blue Whale gives you a good amount of HP and defense because of the ability that gives you 3 defense for every 20 health. Both are amazing effective HP pets, but as an archer, you will have a lot of strength, so Baby Yeti is better. However, with the strength nerf that happened, not all builds have an insane amount of strength, and there are some cases, but not many, where Blue Whale gives more effective HP. The calculations are not hard, so look at your setup and figure out what fits you best. Anyways, the 6th and 7th pets are Ender Dragon and Golden Dragon. Both of these pets are clearly damage pets, but they are very expensive. Golden Dragon has worse effective HP, intelligence, and speed compared to the Ender Dragon in dungeons, but it does slightly more damage. Although, Ender Dragon is cheaper than the Golden Dragon and better if you plan on doing the end content. Also keep in mind that you would need to keep a bill in your bank for the Golden Dragon to be even considered and you will need to reforge your legendary and mythic talismans to be shaded. That is because the golden dragon does not give you any crit chance. Finally, the last pet is Blaze. This pet gives you intelligence and defense as base stats, and has the abilities to upgrade Blaze armor stats up to 40%, and double the effects of the hot potato box. Overall, this is the pet you need if you're going for a frozen Blaze armor. Let's move on to pet items. There's so many pet items and honestly it all comes down to preference, but here are the ones I recommend. Spooky Cupcake for an additional 30 strength and 20 speed, Tiger Plushie for 3-5 attack speed, Minus Relic for increased pet stats by 33%, and Dwarf Turtle Shelmet for no knockback. The Minus Relic might not be the best option since for one it's very expensive and not that good. And anyways, most people end up using the Shelmet because the knockback in dungeons is one of the most annoying things. Anyways, let's talk about the weapons now. The weapons I'll be mentioning are Artisanal Short Bow, Machine Gun Bow, Hurricane Bow, Runin's Bow, Super Undead Bow, Spirit Bow, Death Bow, Last Breath, Bone Meringue, Juju Short Bow, Flower Truth, Soul Whip, Terminator, and Scylla. The first weapon is Machine Gun Bow. This bow is very underrated, cheap, and decent for early game floors. On top of that, it has the ability that rapidly shoots, which can be helpful sometimes. Really good starter bow, but requires Calcom 2, so if you are really new, a good bow to use is the Artisanal Short Bow. This bow is not really a dungeon bow and cannot be dungeonized, but does a decent amount of damage and is really cheap. The second bow is Hurricane Bow. This bow is also an underrated bow for early game. Does more damage than machine gun and can shoot more arrows at a time. 
although a machine gun bow still has a good ability so having it on the side is definitely helpful if you are still in early game. The third weapon is Runin's bow. This bow is very good as well for early and possibly mid game. The ability it has where it shoots multiple arrows comes in hand for clearing too. The fourth weapon is Super Undead Bow. It is the upgraded version of the Undead Bow and it does 100% damage to undead monsters but has a Catacomb 6 year requirement and is outclassed by other bows. The fifth weapon is the Spirit Bow, which has a floor 4 completion requirement. This bow has a passive where it deals 2% more damage to undead mobs for every 1% missing HP, which means if you are half HP, you deal double the damage to undead mobs. On top of that, you can still use this bow when you're dead, so overall a decent mid game bow. The sixth bow is the Death Bow. This bow is the upgraded version of the Super Undead Bow and has the same ability where it deals 100% more damage to undead mobs. Compared to the Spirit Bow, it is better in terms of damage against undead mobs, but double the price. The seventh weapon is Last Breath. This weapon might be expensive, but it's very good for its ability, where it reduces the defense of your target by 10% per hit, maxing at 50%. Good secondary weapon for its ability and damage. The eighth weapon is Bone Merang. You probably heard about it, but this weapon was nerfed a while ago, which destroyed its price. But I wanted to mention it because it's still good single hit damage, even more than Juju, but when it comes back, it does no damage. In some situations, it can be helpful for clearing, but that is up to you. You still can't use multiple bones. And also, I want to add that it is helpful for stopping Thorn in floor 4 boss room, so that is a good use for it. Speaking of Juju, the next weapon is, well, Juju Shortbow. This is now the most used weapon in the whole game because right now it is broken for its price. It is really good for clearing and does really good damage for early end game players. Just keep in mind though that the bow shoots faster the more attack speed you have, which means you will need to reforge your talisman to something that includes attack speed. The 10th and 11th weapons are Flower of Truth and Soul Whip. You might be wondering, these are not bows. How is this good for archers? Well, the answer is simple. They are mainly used for clearing if the bow you have is not good for that. Comparing both of those, Flower Tooth takes 10% of your max mana each time you use it, which means even if you do have a lot of mana, it doesn't matter, you'll always run out of mana while clearing. Other than that, it is still good. However, I prefer the Soul Whip because it deals a decent amount of damage, requires no mana, and can lifesteal while constantly spamming the ability. There are other clearing weapons, but these are the ones I recommend. The next weapon is Terminator. As many of you already know, Terminator is the best archer weapon, but requires E-Man 7 to use. Especially in master mode, this weapon is a must-have for archers, as archers need to be the highest damaging player in the party. Finally, the last weapon is Scylla. This is not really used as a damaging weapon, but more of a secondary healing weapon. Since short bows do not give life steal, healing can be an issue. Therefore, having suspicious reforge on Scylla and using the wither shield ability, it heals you up. Anyways, that sums up the weapons. Hopefully I was able to help you decide on which one to use. Now for its reforges. For Scylla, go for Suspicious Reforge. For Terminator, go for Hasty for the crit chance. And for Damage, go Spiritual. If you cannot get Spiritual, Rapid can work too. For the Ultimate Enchant on the other hand, Soul Eater is the best. But Swarm also works as an alternative. Just keep in mind though that you can just use a Soul Eater 3 if you cannot afford a Soul Eater 5, so there is no need to go for Swarm. Next up, we have the helpful items. The first and most important item is Ice Spray. This weapon is expensive, but it's actually really helpful for killing fast mobs like Shadow Assassins because it has an ability where it freezes mobs for 5 seconds, giving you time to do as much damage as possible. The second item is the Wand of Atonement. This one heals you for 170 HP per second for 7 seconds. If it's too expensive, you can use the downgraded ones as well. The third item is Florid or Ornate Zombie Sword. The Florid Zombie Sword is the upgraded version of the Ornate Sword and has a good healing ability where it heals you for 168 HP plus 5% of your total health. The fourth item is Plasma Flux, Overflux or Mana Flux. The Plasma Flux is the upgraded version of the Overflux and they all give you more strength and increases your regen. The fifth item is Gloomlock, Grimoire. This item has an ability where it heals you for 40% with overflow mana. Personally, this item is better than the Florid Zombie Sword, but it is quite expensive, so if you find Florid to be good enough, there is no need to upgrade. Just remember that it consumes a lot of soul flow over time and lowers your damage after you use it. 
The sixth item is Gyro Wand. This item has two abilities. The left click ability creates a rift at the targeted locations, 8 blocks in radius, and all mobs in the rift gets pulled to the center for 4 seconds. The right click ability applies the aligned effect to 4 nearby players and yourself for 6 seconds. What aligned does is that it splits incoming damage evenly between all aligned players. Overall, this item is very helpful for killing mini bosses and clearing rooms with its left click ability. In addition, very helpful and necessary for Master Mode 6, but of course, mages won't be in Master Mode unless you're really high catacomb. The seventh item is Wither Cloak Sword. This weapon is mostly used for its ability where it spawns a veil around you, giving you immunity from all damage. This is probably the most underrated ability in the game. It is extremely helpful for blocking damage that you know is about to come. For example, when countering a Shadow Assassin. In addition, helpful for Phase 3 of the Floor 7 boss room when jumping on the lava. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video took me a long time to make, so I appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you want to see more Skyblock videos, hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot. If we hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of the year, I will be doing a face reveal. So anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.